It's great to see you all here. Good morning. Uh, I'm Frank Cuiambo, and on behalf of USC and the Saul Price School of Public Policy, I would like to be the first to welcome you to our kickoff celebration of the newly reestablished Safe Communities Institute. Um, as a director of SCI, it's really an honor for me to be part of an institute that has such a distinguished uh, history uh, of excellence and, and leadership for the community. You know, it's been nearly uh, five years since the last graduation class of DCI back in October of uh, 2010. And it's good to see some DCI graduates. Are any of you who are DCI graduates, could you please raise your hand? Okay, all right, this is great. Welcome back. Well, you know, in those, those five years, the university has been committed to revamping and making even better the Delinquency Control Institute, which is now the Safe Communities Institute. And over those years, we've worked very hard, and it's been through the efforts of many of you and countless others that have uh, dedicated hours and hours of advice uh, and counsel on how to make this program better. But there's one person uh, without whose support and commitment and passion for SCI, this day would not be possible. And that's our dean. The dean of the USC Price School of Public Policy, Dean Jack Knott. So it's my pleasure to introduce Jack Knott. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, welcome to USC and the Seoul Price School of Public Policy. Thank you for joining us on this very special occasion as we launch the Safe Communities Institute, uh, which is often known now as SCI. Uh, and I believe that this is at a critically important juncture in our nation's history for such an institute to be launched. But before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge uh, especially the leadership and staff who have worked so very hard to bring us to this point uh, where the institute is reconstituted and launched today. And so I'd like to uh, name uh, three people in particular and then let's recognize them as a group. First is uh, Frank Kiambo, who you just met. Uh, he's the SCI director. Uh, second, uh, see how you follow instructions? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, he's such a popular guy, that's okay. Uh, second is uh, Dr. Errol Southers, uh, who is an expert in homegrown violent extremism studies and in the Institute, and uh, then also Juan Noguera, uh, our special project specialist with the Institute. Please give them a round of applause. I'd also like to acknowledge, acknowledge the SCI Advisory Board members that are here. Our Advisory Board uh, includes some of the most prominent public safety officials and public servants in the region, and we're very, very honored to have their participation and leadership with the Institute. Uh, again, I'd like to read off their individual names. Please raise your hand uh, when your name is uh, announced, and then we'll recognize them as a group. First, Mike Dury, Chief of the Long Beach Fire Department. Uh, there he is. Uh, Robert Luna, Chief of Police for Long Beach Police Department. Uh, then Marvin Southard, Director of the LA County of Mental Health, Department of Mental Health. Uh, Steven Zipperman, Chief of Police for the LA School Police Department. Is uh, Steven here? Uh, also, Joseph Farrell, Commissioner of the California Highway Patrol, and Jerry Powers, Chief of the LA County Probation Department, uh, the members of our advisory board. Please give them uh, a well welcome. You know, the mission of the Price School of Public Policy is to improve the quality of life for people and their communities, both here and abroad. And I can think of nothing more important than to, public, to the quality of life of communities than public safety and the well-being of those people in the community. But uh, in today's world, public safety is not achieved by the police department alone although obviously the police are very important, but it also requires a partnership with several other agencies and with the community, and in this case with the university. It's very important that we have affordable housing 
that we have public transportation, social services, and mental health services, economic development, healthy communities, and equality opportunity for a quality education. All of these things contribute to public safety. And I'm pleased to say that the SCI is directly connected to the communities that we are involved in on these issues and is an integral component of these issues with us as we address our research and education and outreach programs. Now, as was mentioned, uh, SCI used to be called the, the Delinquency Control Institute, the DCI. It was founded in 1946. It has a distinguished 60-year history. And uh, like uh, Frank mentioned about five years ago, uh, we had a transition in leadership. It kind of ran out of its energy. But we were determined not to let it end there. We wanted to uh, redo the curriculum, uh, hire new leadership, uh, as well as constitute new partners in an advisory board and relaunch the program, which is our purpose today. Now, as you know, over time, our understanding of and approach to public safety has evolved. It involves much more community uh, policing, neighborhood involvement and trust, a better understanding of the role of racism and poverty in crime, the need for education, social services, and other ways to support the community, as well as the good and bad role of technology. Uh, and uh, of course, in today's world, we also have homegrown uh, violent extremism. In response to these changes, we have, uh, I think, developed a really exciting new program under exciting new leadership that better reflects today's approach to public safety and that helps us meet the specific challenges that communities face today in our interconnected world. The goal is for government, public safety officials, and members of the community to come together, to trust each other, and work together for the common safety of our neighborhoods, our children, our youth, and our families. SEI is a significant program that represents a partnership between law enforcement, the community and the university. And we're very proud to be the school at USC that is hosting and supporting this partnership. Just in the past year, there have been numerous tragedies that we are all familiar with across the country that have strained these ties uh, to the breaking point. These incidents have raised serious issues of continued racism, extremist violence, and also uh, police violence. And it's captured the political dialogue nationally and has become a huge social and policy issue that we confront today. But these incidents also raise the complex problem of multiple and reinforced social and economic inequality and physical and environmental degradation of communities and places that pose huge challenges for public safety. As we cross the one year anniversary of what took place in Ferguson, we see that building trust and engagement remain paramount, but are not very easy to achieve. There is a need for those involved in public sa safety to better engage the community, to reflect the e ethnicity and values of the community, and to operate and communicate in an open and trustworthy and transparent way. In the 21st century, public safety is no longer just a matter of the police. It is this collective action problem that we must work on together, and it's of paramount importance. So the, loss, the launch of the Safe Communities Institute comes at a hugely important juncture in our nation's history. It is a time of fractured societal relations, but also a time of great opportunity to do something about it. And through SCI, we have the expertise, and we have the resources, and we have the passion, and we have the commitment to make a meaningful and positive impact on this issue. And I look forward to working together through SCI and all of our partners here to improve the quality of life and the public safety of our communities and families. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dean Knott, for really putting into perspective what the vision of SCI is. And as we had an outstanding past in DCI, we're looking forward to a much brighter future as SCI. And as the dean mentioned, we have an outstanding group of advisors. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I know it's warm out here. Uh, I think everybody had the same reaction when we walked in here. The air conditioning's back over here, and we're out here. Uh, so again, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, I'm proud to stand up here and say that I am a graduate of uh, DCI uh, back in 1997, class 105, and we learned so much when we were coming through here. It was a great opportunity to meet other people in law enforcement and really helped put me on this career path uh, to become chief in Long Beach. I learned about leadership, I learned about problem solving, but more important, I learned a whole lot about collaboration. And that is gonna be one of the keys for every student coming through here to learn from each other, learn best practices, and figure out how to move forward uh, together. I'm very proud to be part of the committee. Uh, I'm honored that I was selected to be part of this committee. There are hundreds and hundreds of years of experience, uh, a powerhouse of people who are sitting around the room, and uh, through the experiences that we've shared, uh, I can guarantee you, we, you won't find a group of people who are as committed to making this program the best that it can be. Uh, and from law enforcement or the committee mem members to USC, thank you for being so forward thinking and doing this with us together. Uh, the complexities of our profession right now are enormous. And you spoke about them and I wanted to just spend a couple of minutes on that. Um, and I won't be long, I know it's hot out here. Um, I wanted to say, and I'm speaking specifically about uh, policemen, although I was introduced as the fire chief. I'm actually wondering, uh, no offense to any firemen here, but I'm just wondering if you could handle all the work, because there's a lot of work that goes on in uh, DCI, and I wanna make sure that uh, you guys are gonna be good, but for all the law enforcement people here, we can help them out as time's going on if something happens. Uh, we'll make sure that we uh, work as a team together. But today our law enforcement officers are better trained. Uh, we're more diverse. Uh, we're, the way we're recruited, we're hired, uh, we're so different and unique. We're built for the current challenges that face us today. And the challenges that face us today are plenty. There has been I can't think of a time where there has been more scrutiny on law enforcement as there has this last year. And the level of, or the demands, the accountability, and the expectations are higher than they ever have been. But this is where this program comes in. And this is where we're very thankful that all of you were able to have the foresight to put this together. In this day and age, if we're not collaborating with each other, our law enforcement partners, our fire department partners, other government agencies, private partners, and the most important asset we have, our community, if we're not working together to solve some of the challenges we have, uh, it's gonna be very tough. And at the end of the day, in the, if you were selected to be in this class, that means you're in a leadership position and you have the opportunity and realistically the obligation to go back and make sure that you're leading the right way so that our employees survive a very lengthy career, uh, hopefully 25 years plus. Um, you're gonna learn about data-driven law enforcement practices, hopefully the best, because what you learn is you look around this room, even though we have different uniforms, uh, our backgrounds are very different, uh, you come here with an open mind, willingness to share new ideas, and I'm gonna tell you something, I don't care how small your department is or how large your department is, it's about sharing those ideas. Very, very important, and I can't think of a better place to not only share them, but facilitate, facilitate them in a way where we move forward and we learn something very, very important. As we look around this room here, you don't only see law enforcement and firefighters, you see people from different fields. And the dean spoke about it earlier. If you can just think of a short list 
of the challenges that we in law enforcement face today? Um, does a lack of education come to mind as maybe some of the challenges that we're facing today? Poverty, health, the de-investments in mental illness or substance abuse programs, the willingness or the desire to resist law enforcement, at least for us specifically in the last year. And realistically, at the end of the day, I hope that this team effort finds a way to share with everybody that we found the fact that we realize that good behavior is a shared responsibility by all, not just people in law enforcement or government um, entities, but everybody involved so we can make a better world. So thank you to everybody again who was involved in putting this together. I think you're right on. The timing couldn't be better. And I'm looking forward to seeing the results and the leaders that we pump out of here, uh, leaders of tomorrow. So thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you, Chief Luna of the Long Beach Police Department. And it wasn't the sun that made me make that mistake. I just wanted to make sure everyone was paying attention. After Dean Knott's instructions were so uh, um, poorly followed, I just wanted to make sure that everyone was paying attention. <laughs> um, there are, the strength of a program is in its faculty, and we have an as assembled an outstanding faculty. And I just would like to acknowledge the faculty members that will be teaching at SCI. Could you all please raise your hands? We've got quite a few of them here. And uh, for the students, uh, during the lunch, you may want to talk to some of your instructors that are going to be in the program. So the core of this program, obviously, is education. And where does it start? It starts with the students. So what I would like to do is ask all of the students that are in the first cohort to please come up here, uh, to stand in the shade, if you wouldn't, please. And uh, I would like to ask Lieutenant Kimberly Unland of the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department to speak on their behalf. Good afternoon. I am grateful for the opportunity to attend the Safe Communities Institute program. I am excited about this program because I strongly believe in the core topics, our conversations we as public safety leaders and need to understand and share and become better with our society and public safety, especially today. I don't know if any of you feel this way, but um, all of a sudden I woke up and realized, how did I become the oldest within my department? I grew up in law enforcement. Both my mom and dad were deputy sheriffs. My dad retired after 34 years of service with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and my mom retired after 24 years of service with the Sheriff's Department. She came on when the women wore skirts in 1972. They carried their guns and purses. They wore heels and nylons. So I grew up in law enforcement. I knew after the age of 16, my first ride along at East Los Angeles Station, that law enforcement's what I had to do. I had a passion, desire. I have a great opportunity right now. I work at our Sheriff's Department Academy. And during the orientation, when our recruits come, I have an opportunity to speak with them. I see them sitting in those chairs as new deputies, new recruits, ready to start the academy. And it brings me back to that day when I sat in that chair, eager, excited, ready to take on this job, to work with the communities, to become better, to make our world better. What I'm excited about is I see a lot of that same passion and energy in our recruits that we have today. I receive recruits that are also proud, who look sharp. On their faces, they have that passion to serve our community. I see recruits who are gonna need strong mentors and leaders and community public safety representatives to get them on that path to be successful with engaging the community. I see recruits that need the mentors that will show them to have the courage to be strong, especially during these rough times right now when public scrutiny is very high and it's very challenging for our officers in law enforcement. What I see is a pride and hope in our future these recruits have still chosen this profession, even in these times, this noble profession. When I was asked why I want to be part of this program and what I expect to get from it, I expect to enhance my thinking, my growth, learning from the advisors and the experts in their field of study. I expect to learn from my peer leaders sharing their experiences on how we can become better in our community. But what I'm really excited about is that pride and hope that I feel in our law enforcement profession and our public safety profession right now. 
And as leaders, we need to get back to that pride and get that hope back to our recruits and our communities that we can survive these issues. And growing up in law enforcement, I've seen where we can do that. It is my hope that we all, during these classes, we look at the opportunities with, throughout this program for opportunities of where we can find pride within ourselves, share that pride within our organizations, pride within our communities. I thank all the advisory boards. I know this is a new program, new era for us. And I see, because of the folks, the students that have come back and invested time in this program, that we're looking for a real treat. So I'm excited about that. And I thank you for committing and investing time and effort into all of us public leaders. And I know I'm commi committed and I challenge all my fellow students that we will go back and share these experiences with our young officers, with our communities, so we can become bigger, better, and stronger and collaborate and become a better united community. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kimberly, and congratulations to all of our students. By the way, each of these students was hand-selected by their chief as people that have demonstrated leadership and will demonstrate leadership in the future as their career grows. So congratulations, all of you. Now, before uh, we conclude with uh, Dean Knott, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Errol Southers to come up, and uh, he has a special uh, presentation. Thank you, Frank. Well, in the interest of time and heat, I'm going to be very brief. I want to thank Dean Knott. Uh, without his leadership and, and support over the last more than three years to reorganize this program. And I was tasked then to reorganize, restructure, rebrand, remarket this program. And many of you served on a working group. You answered surveys. You talked to me on the phone. You talked to me in person, often more than once. And what was clear about this task was not about getting it done, but about trying to get it right. And the dean was very patient. I do know something about him. We didn't want to send a draft to his desk that had to come back, hopefully more than once. But through all that process, there's one person who helped us stay on course, helped me stay on course, and, and never wavered in her support and confidence that we would get it done. So may I ask Regina Nordahl to come up? So, Regina, on behalf of DCI and all your support and your leadership over the last three years, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, with that, I'd like to introduce, uh, reintroduce Dean Knott to close these ceremonies. Yeah, I add my uh, thanks to Errol and to Regina for their great work on this. Regina is our Associate Dean for Administration in the school and oversees uh, not, not only uh, this program, but also our ROTC program uh, with the military that our school also manages. Uh, you know, we got to do something special, right, to kick off the launch of this program. So we have the privilege of inviting some special Trojan guest to join us now. So please enjoy. <laughs>
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the presentation today, and I would like to thank Heidi and Kristen and Juan for putting this all together. So please now join us, and, and we have an outstanding lunch buffet inside here. Thank you very much for coming.